Good morning friends. Today is the day after Christmas and guess what I have for you? QA7. See? QA7. Another 10 questions. I'm going to cover it when I come back. Hey! Hello there. It's hard to believe after this short period of time that I already have 70 questions that I got from all you people, you wonderful people that are following this channel. You, I, you don't know how much I appreciate everything that you're doing for me. I, and I hope that my efforts pay off and somebody gets some good out of this. Uh, I have 10 more questions here. This is QA7. And believe it or not, I'm already working on QA11. So I have a lot of questions to cover and I'm trying to do these once a week here to just not flood everybody with questions and answers. We'll get started here. And by the way, if, if you like this channel and you want to see more of it, please subscribe. It's a real simple thing just to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I post a new video, ring that bell. Okay, there's a little bell icon there. You just click on that. It's over to the right. And you just click on that and you'll be notified when I post a new video. So here we go. Question number one. Hey Don, great vids. Well, we all know that. <laughs> Been interested in moving to Ecuador for five years now. Is there English or bilingual grade schools in the Monta area? Yes, there are. All of them have bilingual education. It's one of the greatest programs they have here in Ecuador. Somebody told me the other day that some of the kids that come out of these schools speak better, I'm talking about local kids, speak better English than the expats do. So yeah, they do. They have plenty of them here. And if you're coming to Monte and you want more information about it, like specific details, like specific schools and so forth, uh, send, send, me an, send me an email, okay, and I'll get that for you. Oh my God, I think I almost got buzzed by a buzzard there. Did you see that go by? I may be under attack. It's been really quiet here all this morning. Now I got dogs barking and motorcycles going by. It's another wonderful day in Monta. Uh, question number two. Who is Mr. Parker? You don't know who Mr. Parker is? <laughs> Mr. Parker is the producer of this show. He, he likes to pop in on videos once in a while and show himself. If you saw the movie Life of Pi, you might be familiar with Richard Parker. I wanted to use Richard Parker for this little guy. This is my buddy here that I've had for years. And, but I was told by someone that I can't use Richard Parker because they, it's a trademark name used in movies like the movie Life of Pi. So I decided to call him Mr. Parker. And Mr. Parker, if you look around most of my videos, Mr. Parker is lurking somewhere in the background. Sometimes he's pretty obvious and visible and sometimes he's not. So I, I don't know why I picked this little thing. Somebody gave me this years ago in a restaurant. Some kid left it behind and I've kept it ever since and that's who Mr. Parker is, okay? So, thank you for that important question. I know that everybody's been wondering, who's Mr. Parker? Question number three. Here is a question. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm reading right off of the paper here, okay? I'm not making this stuff up. This is coming from you people. Here is a question. When you moved, did you have any banking hiccups either on the U.S. end of it or on the Ecuadorian side? Yes, I did. The biggest hiccup I had was when I went to JEP to purchase my CDs, I had to prove where the money came from. What a hassle. The money laundering is a major problem in Ecuador because of the drugs and the drug cartels and all the money it comes through here out of Colombia and from other parts of the South America that get filtered through here and they look for places to launder this money. So when you bring your money in here, you have to be prepared to show where you got it from. 
I had to show a cancel check from the cell of my house. I had to show closing documents. I had to show the deposit where I deposited it in the bank. I had to show six months worth of banking statements to prove, you know, where my money comes from. And at a couple of points, I thought that just wasn't going to work. And but that's the, that's the hiccup. Yeah, it, it it can be a bit of a hassle. Once you get through that hurdle, though, and you're established with your bank, then they pretty much leave you alone unless it's something over five thousand dollars. If it's something, if you make a deposit that's over five grand. I believe you're going to have to prove where you got it from, and I'm sorry, that's just the way it goes. Number four, enjoying your QA. Does Monta smell bad? No. <coughs> he said, he or she said, <coughs> excuse me. It seemed to me like when I tried to do this questionnaire before and I asked this question, or I read this question, I got all choked up. <clears throat> I apologize for that. I may have to get somebody from my staff to bring me a cup of water. <laughs> Enjoying your QA. Does Monta smell bad? Another YouTuber that travels South America mentioned recently in his video that Monta was one of the smelliest cities he's gone through in Ecuador. No, it does not smell bad here, folks. I don't know if you can see behind me. There's, oh, there's, oh, there's no white caps today. There's there's usually a lot of wind blowing here, and most of the wind is onshore. No, it does not smell bad here. The air is clean, and it's, it's clear. You can see all the way across this desert here. You can see Monte Cristi from my back door, or my back patio here, my back window here. And the, the, now, I, maybe somewhere around the, t the canneries, maybe there is an odor over there. Maybe if you get, you know, upwind or downwind from them them up I guess that would be if it, the, if if the cannery is upwind from you and you're down I, I, somebody help me with this please you know what I'm saying if you're by the cannery um, you maybe you smell something but you know I've been all over Monta and I've been here seven months now I've not smelled anything bad Except maybe some bad feet somewhere, but you know, you never know. So question number five. So when you are out and about, how do you, how do you go to the bathroom? Yeah, I, I'll read it again. So when you are out and about, somebody, one of my viewers actually asked me this question. I don't make this up. So when you are out and about, how do you go to the bathroom? Well, <laughs> let me just start off by saying that public urination is perfectly legal here. You heard me right. Public urination is perfectly legal here. The first week that I was here, I was coming down the Malacan, coming to the mall, and there was a guy, an Ecuadorian guy, leaning against a tree, making pee pee. Fortunately, he was facing away from me, and I didn't have to be traumatized by what I might would have seen, but there he was in all his glory. And I, you know, when I'm out and about and I need to go to the bathroom, I find a public restroom. But the custom here is, it's legal here and it's, I, even though I've been told that it's not legal for women to do it. So I kind of can understand why, I think, but and for those of you that want to know uh, where I heard this from, I got it from straight off of, of uh, Amelia and JP's channel months ago. It's from one of their videos when they talked about uh, several things about living in Ecuador, you know, that are not necessarily the best reasons for being here, I guess, or something, something like that. But, yeah, unfortunately, public urination is legal here and people do it. When I'm out, I, I go to a public restroom. So, number six, when are you going to run out of Q&A? Well, when you stop asking questions, doofus, when the hell else would I stop running Q&As? I'm, I'm serious. That's, I mean, I, folks, I give you all the questions. I, when I first saw this, I thought, eh, scratch that one. But, you know, 
because I'm an honest person and I'm here to serve you and to give you accurate information. I read every question that people write to me and I share it with you. It's what you get for being a follower, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, yeah, when I, you know, I like doing these Q&As. I think it's valuable. I wish some of these other YouTubers would do Q&As. I mean, they, they do them, but they do like hundreds of them at a time and get bored, you know, trying to get through all their list of questions and answers and it's like, you know, I'll do 10 at a time and that's it. So, yeah, I, when they when they run out, I'll stop doing them, okay? But until, they're, until you guys are asking me questions, I'm gonna keep doing them. Number seven, it's a good one. Is pot legal there? No. I'll just tell you that right now. I'll read some answers that I got from some other peeper. peeper. Some other people. Tom Taylor wrote and said, marijuana is legal in Ecuador. You can have up to a third of an ounce, but you can't sell it. Law changed a couple years ago. I read that about this on another site, probably Facebook. I he didn't say where. Marianne Scott said, I heard marijuana, I just love hearsay. <laughs> I heard marijuana THC is highly illegal still, but the CBD and hemp industry is booming in Ecuador. JP of Amelia and JP says he depends on CBD, therefore his back pain. And I think I heard that from one of his videos. I still follow my friends, Amelia and JP. They're my friends. I may not be their friend, but I don't know. Never got that cup of coffee with them. They live right there. Can't even get a cup of coffee with them, even after I supported them on Patreon. Thanks a lot, Amelia and JP. I appreciate it. I still love you. You owe me a cup of coffee. Anyway, that's where I heard that, and I and I. I know that JP had some serious problems with his back, and I hope that he, you know, he gets to take advantage of, of all this stuff that's available to help him out. He, he needs, I, I know back problems is not anything to joke about. But anyway, as an Ecuadorian national, I must warn, oh, this is what somebody else wrote in answer to this, pot, is pot legal? I didn't get a name. He said, as an, I'm going to quote, as an Ecuadorian national, I must warn you that there are no legal ways to purchase marijuana in Ecuador. You can and will get harassed by Ecuadorian police for having low amounts that can be considered for personal use. Unfortunately, street drug dealers now use these small amounts to avoid jail. So the police will assume that you're dealing and just happen to have a larger stash hidden somewhere ne nearby. Somebody else wrote and said, cannabis in Ecuador is legal for personal consumption in quantities of up to 10 grams. The scale of marijuana, the sale of marijuana is illegal. According to the 2008 Constitution of Ecuador in its Article 364, the Ecuadorian state does not see drug consumption as a crime, but only as a health concern. So, you know, they said, is it legal there? And I said, no, so I don't know. I, 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 I do know that in the apartment building that I live in here in Torrey Marina, under the current management, association management here, if you are observed or caught smoking marijuana on property, you'll be evicted. Uh, that's just what I heard. There's that hearsay again. <clears throat> they don't, a lot of people don't like it. Lots of people do. I don't, I don't smoke pot, so I wouldn't know. I know people that do, and I don't have any problem with them. So what they do is their business. Number eight, we're getting toward the end here. Number eight, did you buy your phone here or did you bring it with you? I brought my phone with me. I had an iPhone uh, 10R, the XR. Uh, it was an AT&T phone in the United States. I contacted AT&T when I went to close my account and asked them, you know, what I need to do to unlock it. And they gave me a, a address to go to online. I went online and I unlocked the phone and I brought it with me. And when I, first day I was here, well, actually the third day I was here, I went to Claro with my good friend Juan of the Juan and Leticia 
uh, gang, <laughs> my good friends from the States that came down with me. And we went to Clairon. We bought a SIM card for my phone. And that's what I use. I still use my phone that I brought from the States. I, I don't know that I would buy a phone here because it's all in Spanish. I guess you can use English language on the phones here. But everybody that has a phone that they bought here that I've seen, there's been some stuff that I had to look at and it was in Spanish and I, I, can, I can read a lot of Spanish and get by with it, but I just don't, I, you know, if I buy another phone, I'm going to have one shipped from the United States. Number nine, since Ecuador is tied to the U.S. dollar, I just love that. Tied to the U.S. dollar, what do you mean by that? Questioner? Viewer that asked this question, what do you mean tied to the U.S. dollar? I, that makes it sound like that we, that if something happens to the U.S. dollar, it's going to affect us here, like inflation. Have you noticed any impact from the steep rise in inflation? Food, housing, energy costs increasing? No. We, we, we are not tied to the U.S. dollar. We use the American dollar here. We don't print it. Every American dollar that we have here is brought in by somebody like me. And most of you people that watch this channel. The inflation here is less than 1%. Way less than 1%. It has been for years. I know there's the only increase I see in prices here are, there was an increase in taxes here recently under the new administration and there was a there was a decrease in taxes. They took away a lot of taxes. The luxury tax, I think that's the IVA tax, but I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. But they increased taxes on other items like alcohol. So alcohol just recently went up, but it wasn't because of in, inflation in the United States. It wasn't because of the American the money here being tied to the United States. Is because they Im implemented or what is the word I'm looking for? They applied a new tax rate to alcohol. Can't even remember what it went up to. It's really kind of insignificant. Last question. I know some of you are going, hooray! Can you apply for your residency visa when you're in Ecuador? Of course you can. You can apply for it anywhere in the world, really, if you want to. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know why you would. If you're an American citizen, let's just use that for an example, and you come here, my advice to you is do all of this stuff while you're in the States. Uh, it'll be much easier as far as getting all your apostille documentation together and then getting it here and then getting it all put together and get it translated to Spanish. And then... I cannot believe it. Stand by, please. It'll be over in a second. Stay by while we play the national anthem here. See, it's over. That's the way you deal with noise here. You just have to just accept it, you know, because it's short-lived. Nobody can get in their car here without setting off their alarm. Amazing. I should start a school. Uh, okay, back to the question. Can you apply for your rent? Okay, all right, so... Yeah, yes you can, but I don't recommend it. You know, it'd be easier for you if you just do it from your home home country. But if you're here and you, you know, you came here like on a tourist visa and you decide you like it and you want to stay here, yeah, you can apply while you're here. So, uh, but just be ready for a real hassle because it's, you're, you're going to do a lot of stuff that you'll wish you were in the States doing it. You don't want to pay $100 to have paperwork sent here. Because that's what will happen. Unless you have a different shipping method. So anyway, that's the end of it. QA7. And next week will be QA8. Then we'll do 9 and then 10. I'm working on 11. Thank you so much for all the great questions you people are throwing at me. I really appreciate it. And again, if you like this channel, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the don't like button. I mean, I, I get them. I posted a video this morning about the peace and serenity around Monta this morning, and somebody, you know, somebody, there's some miserable people in this world, I'm telling you.
anyway I'm feeling great today so uh, from uh, Monte Ecuador on a Sunday morning day after Christmas thanks for watching